So hey what's up guys welcome back to channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto went back in time with Tsunade to settle down. This is part 7, and if you want more then please leave a like share and subscribe. Let get in the video, before that make sure to drink a glass of water. Let's start the video. So let me get this straight Shikaku Nara said, while addressing a somewhat tired group consisting of Naruto, Hinata, Kakashi, Anko, Hana and the Hokage in the middle of the council room, with the entire village council watching. You two are part of an experimental training program that may or may not be implemented on a larger scale, as soon as the next batch of genin is registered. This system was created by Ghost in order to deliver a more balanced and efficient training experience to the newest batch of genin. Said program was still in its experimental stages, which is why only you two, which I am to understand were handpicked by Ghost himself for unknown reasons, were trained in this fashion. Anko and Hana, while not in the original plan, wound up in this mess, but managed to contribute to furthering the plan's progress by teaching some of their skills to you too. This is why you are more capable than we assumed and were allowed on this unofficial mission to capture the traitor Mizuki, confirmed by Kakashi, Hokage-sama, and Ibiki. Correct. All eyes were on the small group as they all nodded. Hana was shrinking before her mother's piercing stare, and Hinata was somewhat unnerved by her father's apparent lack of emotion. Naruto, Kakashi, Sirotobi, and Anko couldn't really care less about how much they were getting stared at. They've had worse. Am I to assume Shibi spoke up, gaining everyone's attention, that young Shikamaru was originally chosen as well? This raised a few eyebrows. There was a split second's pause as the group looked at each other with a few glances before Naruto let out a snigger. Yeah, Iro Nai was thinking of putting Shikamaru in the group as well. But when he asked him that night, the lazy bastard said it was too troublesome. He said that he would only screw up the review reports and make it look bad. He also said something about his mom killing him if he agreed to a deal with some older guy that he had just met. Grumbling was heard throughout the room as several of the council members agreed with Inara's judgment. They still did not approve of Ghost or his methods, but at the moment, their hands were tied. Shikaku was trying to not think of what was going to happen to his son when he explained that particular fact to his wife. It would explain Shikamaru's awkward behavior lately and his occasional secret chakra control training sessions. Speaking of Ghost, where is he? Asked one curious civilian. I would assume that he would at least appear to defend his program. He put enough effort into making it to at least warrant our interest. Several other counselors mumbled in agreement. He put in twice as much effort to piss us off, though grumbled another person in the council. Who are you trying to fool? He wasn't even trying to do that corrected the woman next to him. Ghost Sen has currently left Kanoha to manage some of the business that he mentioned when he first arrived here. Saratobi explained, ignoring the many, and oddly enough true, statements of civilian counsel. If you haven't noticed, it has been three months since he had first graced us with his presence, so it would only be natural that he would leave as scheduled. He will be back within three months, around the time of the Genin exams, so there should be nothing to be concerned about. Nothing to be concerned about my ass. My back is going to be killing me until he gets his butt back here, Anko grumbled. Hana nodded in silent agreement. Oh? He ashy asked, causing the girls to flinch. What does Ghost have to do with your backs? Yes, do tell. Hana growled to her daughter more than anyone else. She didn't like her trust Ghost, and hearing that Hana was spending extended periods of time with the man didn't help things. Hana shrunk back. Her mother was one of the few people in the village that truly made the girl at unease. I it's nothing mom, it's just. How many times do I have to tell you that you address me as inyazuka sama in front of the council? Tsum snapped. Tsum? Chumza sighed. Let the poor girl speak. Does it really matter how your daughter addresses you in front of others? Hiashi mentally sighed at this, knowing it did matter with him and his daughters, even if he wished it didn't. It does when she is 17 years old and a chknin. She growled. Now tell us what you mean when you said your backs would be killing you. Enko blanched. Ah, I just mean that he gives really good massages. Really good massages mmm mayasayagi. Enko started to drool. It didn't take long for Hana to start leaking out of her mouth too. The council sweat dropped, and Tsum was contemplating which incredibly painful way she should use to kill Ghost for inadvertently causing her daughter to embarrass her in front of the council. HMPH. The elder Kaharu grunted. Like it or not, he is gone for three months, so either you find someone else to give you your back rubs or you wait. Now if you will she never got to finish her sentence as Hana and Anko both turned their heads to Naruto with evil glee. Naruto responded in kind by screaming like a little girl and hiding behind the Hokage, who was pondering if he could actually take on the two women in their current state and live to tell about it. Hinata, on the other hand, rushed in between the two pairs and prepared to fight the two women in order to claim first dibs on Naruto's back rubs. Of course, no one knew about that yet. Bakashi was reading a book. Needless to say, the entire council was very lost and speechless. What's going on? Inoichi asked incredulously. 
Well Kakashi replied as if a genocide was not about to occur a few feet away from him. Go taught Naruto here several things such as some advanced chakra control, better fighting forms, common sense, oh I. How to throw kunai better, basic strategies, and was in the process of teaching him others before he left. One of which was, for better or for worse, how to give a massage that would have women melt in your hands. Apparently it's an extremely effective and non-lethal way to obtain information from females, unless they have weak hearts, of course. Anko and Hana here can attest to this. Kakashi nudged his head towards the catfight in the making. That's the main reason why you've seen Ghost running for his life away from them these past few months. A rub here, a squeeze there, and before you know it, you find yourself on the bottom and your tenant on the top. It's a shame they won't let me watch. Like hell we will pervert, now put down the book and help us get our new toy. Anko growled as she tried to circle the Hokage to get to Naruto as Hana distracted Hinata. Everyone watching noted that if this went for much longer, the two women would more than likely try to go through Naruto's human meat shield to get to him. And why is my daughter protecting Naruto then? Hiashi asked, curious and a bit scared to find out. Bakashi chuckled. It is actually quite amusing and ingenious really. While Ghost was teaching Naruto how to give a massage, Anko here was teaching Hinata some of her own interrogation methods. He saw the looks the council and Saratobi were giving him. No, not those methods not yet anyway. I'm talking about cutting someone up with a kunai, telling when someone is lying, creating poisonous untruth serums, and how to do use some sex appeal to intimidate someone. Hiashi's eyes twitched. The overall deal was that both would use each other as test subjects to practice what they've learned. In short, they have first dibs on each other. It just so happens that Naruto hasn't had a chance to practice on Hinata yet, which she has been looking forward to very much, while Hinata has been practicing filleting Naruto here for about two weeks already. It is already known that poison and truth potions don't work on him. That healing power is really something. It still freaking hurts you sick bastard. Naruto shouted as he dodged another snake from Anko. Back foul demon. Back I say. So you're saying that ghost was giving my daughter and Anko here massages that were so good that they could have divulged confidential information. Tsun growled. Pretty much. Kakashi shrugged. But I wouldn't worry about Ghost wanting information from those two. Although he knows much about the village already, he doesn't seem to be interested in clan secrets or techniques. He really was simply giving them the rubs as an apology for dragging them into this so quickly. They weren't supposed to be involved yet from what I understand, and neither was I for that matter, but unlike them I respectfully declined my massage. Why won't you help me? I was kidding. Kakashi deadpanned. Ghost nearly threw up when I asked him as a joke where my massage was. The entire council sweat dropped at the scene in front of them. It was clear that Ghost was having a larger impact on them than they thought as they saw the brawl continue. To Hiashi's amusement, Hinata was putting up a fairly decent fight against Hana. The old man was getting sick at this point from being spun around so much. Hana. Tsum barked, on the verge of jumping out of her seat and whipping her daughter right then and there. Stop this right now. Tsum's outburst was enough to snap Hana out of her daze and back to reality as she retreated from a very scary Hinata. She hadn't used any of her jiken, but she still could hit hard. Hinata-chan. Naruto yelled as Anko dragged him away from Saratobi completely covered in snakes. Save me. I don't want to be raped. 8 trigrams. 32 palms. Hinata shouted as she rushed the unguarded snake mistress and perfectly nailed the combination of tenketsu on her body that would induce temporary paralysis but not injure her body in any way and still enable her to speak. Needless to say, Hiashi was damn well impressed. He was a bit concerned however when his daughter started to hug the fetal position Naruto from behind. Snakes everywhere. Naruto whispered in a traumatized voice. S-H-H-H-H. It's okay Naruto-kun. The snakes are gone now. Hinata whispered, rubbing his head like a pet. Bakashi? Hiashi asked a bit concerned. Um? The Cyclops looked up from his book as if nothing happened. Oh that. Let's just say that we had to leave the two alone with Anko occasionally. The end result is pretty much what you see here. One gets nearly traumatized for life and the other steps in to bring them back to sanity. This occasionally happens when Ghost is teaching them as well, but not nearly as bad as with Anko. It's helped build the trust between them. They're actually a pretty good tag team when it comes to a fight. Hello? Said Snake Woman shouted from the ground. I'm having a little trouble moving here. Paralyzed body and all. Help. That's all and well. Dan's growled, feeling a bit more comfortable with Ghost out of town for a set period of time. But I am concerned about other aspects of the boy. There were dark looks around the room as the kickbee was hinted at. Hinata, it would be best if Yuhiashi started, not wanting to put his daughter in harm's way. I already know about the kickbee father. Hinata said coldly from behind Naruto, shocking everyone in the room who didn't already know she knew. And personally, I am disappointed in how this council and the older villagers manage the situation. 
If one seals a kunai into a scroll, the scroll is still just a scroll, not a kunai. It may have a kunai sealed in it, but it is still just a scroll. Eridokan is no different. The Kikbi's attack was indeed a great disaster, but it does not justify people making a person's life miserable just because he holds the cause. And how have we poorly managed the situation young Haikta? In fact, how do you even know of the Kikbi in the first place? Asked a pompous member of the council. He probably thought the ghost had told her and that he could use it as an excuse to execute him. Anada stared at him with cold eyes that made the man shiver. Hiashi was starting to regret his past treatment of his daughter, if not for the obvious guilt, then for the extreme pain that she would be able to give him in the next few years. Don't think I am as blind and as deaf as the other villagers. October 10, Naruto's birthday, the constant beatings, the whispers of demon and monster behind his back, the seal on his stomach, his new look, the reason no one would tell me how the fourth beat the Kikbi. It was obvious that Naruto-kun was related to the Kikbi in some way. Not everyone in this village is completely ignorant of what is happening around them. All it took was a little research to find out that it was impossible to outright kill a tailed beast in the first place and that the fourth was a seal master. All I had to do was look at a book about tailed beasts and the term Jinch Kriki jumped out practically on the first page. Figuring out what had happened afterwards was simple. The only thing this does is give us another reason to make Naruto-kun would be an ally instead of enemy. Hinata could feel Naruto trembling in her arms and she knew it wasn't snake-induced this time. You actually trust that demon? Spat out one annoying village elder. Hinata sighed. She knew that she was running on pure leftover adrenaline from her fight with Hana, but she couldn't stop here. Odd, she was going to be a nervous wreck after this. First off, if he actually was a demon, do you think it would be smart to antagonize him in the first place? She asked, making a good portion of the civilian council look like gaping fish. I didn't think so. And second, if you are wrong about him, which you are, then you have just spent the last 12 years torturing and harming an innocent boy who has done nothing wrong. I wonder what the other villages would say if they heard that Kanoha endorses child beating. Hinata shot a quick glare at her father to send an additional message to him. Needless to say, he got it. It's just tricking you. Shouted another not so bright counselor. The demon is lying to all of you and biding its time until it kills us all gack. The man's rampage was silenced via kunai in his throat, yet it was Hinata who again spoke in response. Excuse me? She asked quietly as she activated her byakugan. Kakashi raised an eyebrow in interest. Do you not remember who I am? Do you not know what my bloodline can do? Since my training with Ghost Sensei and everyone else had started, my skills have improved dramatically, and yet you assume that Naruto-kun here can lie to me of all people and not get caught. She stared at the counselors with an icy cold stare, with the veins bulging from the side of her eyes. I am the Haika heiress, and I can see everything as clear as day. The way you move shows me how you think, the way you act, the way you live. From what I've seen I'd rather take my chances with a so-called demon than any of you. If Ghost was there, he would have ruined the moment by clapping his hands and loudly applauding such a brilliant performance. You little. Shouted one counselor before Hiashi stood up. Quiet. This got everyone's attention, as Hiashi almost never spoke up. He turned to his daughter sternly. Well we will speak of your less than admirable conduct later, I am curious what have you seen, Hinata. Hinata smiled sweetly at her father before turning to the counselors. Everyone in the room was scared shitless of the girl now. She raised her arm and started pointing out several civilian counselors. That one over there has touched himself thoroughly at least five times since the meeting started, every time I might add was when he was looking at Kakashi-sensei and Naruto-kun. Naruto and Kakashi shivered and backed away from the man at this. The man himself was starting to sweat profusely. Hinata pointed to an elderly woman in the group, that woman there has been constantly fondling a small vial and a kunai in her pocket ever since the meeting started. Her eyes have not gone off of Naruto-kun for more than three seconds. I assume that the vial contains poison, since it does not move like water. The woman growled as several other members of the council stared at her. Poison was strictly forbidden in the council chamber, and civilians were not allowed to bear weapons of any sort in public. Anada wasn't finished yet. Also, I have noticed in addition to that peculiar man who was touching himself, there were at least seven council members who looked at me in particular in a lustful manner several times. I understand that Hana-san and Anko-san are both experienced kanoichi and are used to and trained for such situations, however I am still an academy student and am pretty sure that seduction missions are not given to anyone below the rank of Chknin. Many of the people in the room who weren't complete pricks glared and smirked at the guilty party. Hiashi and Tsum however were stuck between completely enraged and astounded at Hinata's performance and their fellow councilmen. Naruto was just having a hard time dealing with the fact that he was stuck in a room with a bunch of perverts that not only hate him, but have horribly disturbing thoughts about him as well. And then there are those two Anbu in the corner of the room that are constantly gripping their ninjutmen glaring at Naruto-kun. 
As soon as she said that, said Anbu made a beeline from their hiding spot straight for Naruto, and each slashed him deeply across the chest, seemingly before anyone had time to react. As Naruto went down, the others snapped into action. Akashi managed to stab and incapacitate one assailant, while Anko, still on the ground, somehow summoned a snake to pin down the other and distract him long enough for Hinata to land a few precise Ken strikes in the chest. It was somewhat unnerving to the ninja part of the council that those who counterattacked did not seem to care that the blonde was brutally murdered in front of them. You have both disappointed me greatly. You will both be sent to Ibiki and Anko, as soon as she recovers, to undergo the highest level of torture we will allow before executing you. Saratobi growled as he flared some of his killing intent. The not bleeding Anbu chuckled. It doesn't matter, we've rid the village of the demon and. Really? Asked a familiar hyperactive voice from the side of the room. I never knew chairs could be demons. Huh. I guess anything is possible in the shinobi world everyone turned their eyes to see Naruto leaning up against the wall, then turned their heads to see the diced up chair behind Hinata. What? Stuttered the Anbu incredulously. A replacement so fast for an academy student I didn't even see it. How? Impressive for a child. Shikaku thought to himself. He timed it perfectly. Shibi mused. I see that Hinata is not the only one who has improved from the training. Hiyashi pondered. I have a man who just this morning chased me across town for three freaking hours, yelling about toothpaste and toasters, and a psychotic woman thing who enjoys cutting people and licking their blood for teachers. Naruto deadpanned as everyone else sweat dropped a little. Do you honestly think that my paranoia and escaping abilities wouldn't have gotten to at least that level in three months? I have to pull off stuff like that every day if I want to get all my training done on time. Heck, I've gotten to the point where I can replace myself repeatedly within a second without breaking a sweat or even thinking about it. For crying out loud people, they charged me from the front. It was easy for me to get out of the way. Besides I thought you knew that the seal wasn't fully set yet the entire room's idiot population paled dramatically. Be but, Anbu stammered one councilwoman. Anko chuckled from the floor. You're wasting your time. Ghost already had the kid's nerves fully pulled and trained before I even got involved. Trust me, I've tried getting my hands on him using some of my stealth skills. Brat's harder to catch than Tora on catnip. He's naturally wound up tighter than most seasoned Jinin, although I don't think Ghost is the one we should thank for that. Yanaruto chuckled. Who knew running away from angry mobs, dodging the crap that the villagers throw at me on a daily basis, avoiding the alleyways with drunks and rapists, and avoiding the Anbu after every one of my pranks would come in handy. The reaction from his explanation was as expected. Silence, pity, shame, rage, and of course indifference. There were some interesting others though. Rapists. Growled Hana. Oh yeah. Naruto replied with a smile what was scaring the shit out of everyone in the room. He occasionally took some time to set his eyes on several of the civilian members and for added measure, made them glow a little bit for an extra flair. You would be surprised with what you would find if you lived on the streets for a couple of years. Don't worry, I didn't get caught by the rapists somehow. The drunks and the mobs not so much, but I occasionally stumbled across some incidents in the back alleyways. What? Kakashi asked in a shocked manner. Naruto was kicked out of the orphanage when he was seven years old and lived the next two years on the street, with no one looking after him. Saratobi growled in shame. He was busy with the Ichiha massacre at the time and then dealing with its aftereffects, so he couldn't manage to find time to see Naruto. Compounding that was the fact that the boy was elusive enough to dodge Anbu, who he didn't trust for obvious reasons. Saratobi saw neither hide nor hair of him until two years later, when he found Naruto sleeping under the roots of a large tree, thin and clearly starved. As depressing as this sounds. Growled Danzm. We still have the issue of now three apparent traitors to deal with, as well as this new program to decide on. Saratobi took a moment to stare at his old rival to see if there was some sort of hidden agenda on his mind. He is right. Saratobi agreed after a few seconds. We have become distracted by various matters this evening. Let us get Mizuki out of the way so we can discuss the things that matter. Right. Replied a slightly unnerved Inoichi as four more Anbu materialized and took away the two rogue ninja and the decaying body. The report states that after Naruto here went back to the academy, Mizuki confronted him privately and told him that because of his missing three months combined with his poor grades, he would not be able to graduate the academy that year, regardless of how well he did for the rest of the term. Mizuki then told Naruto that he could gain extra credit by performing a secret mission where he would sneak into the Hokage's personal archive and steal the Forbidden Scroll before meeting up with Mizuki at training ground 82 at 11 o'clock to pass the test. Naruto apparently knew that Mizuki was up to something and reported to both his minder, that being Kakashi, and Hokage-sama. There, you three came up with a plan to capture the traitor in the act, as well as give both you and Hinata here some field experience and use the incident as proof that this program works. Am I correct so far? Everyone nodded in agreement. 
Hinata was hunched over Anko, busy reopening her tenketsu. Inoichi continued. The plan was to use Naruto and the scroll as bait to lure Mizuki out and provoke him into revealing his treachery. Kakashi and Hinata would be hiding nearby to confirm this. In the meantime, Hokage-sama would drive the village into a controlled frenzy so that things did not get out of hand and so Mizuki would not suspect anything. That is correct. Saratobi confirmed. I gave explicit orders that should they come across Naruto, they were to not use any excessive means while apprehending the boy so long as he came peacefully. I also said that anyone who decided to overstep their position would have a date with Ibiki. Inoichi proceeded with his review. What you didn't expect was Wanaruki Yamino to find you shortly before Mizuki did. During which, Naruto pretended to play ignorant and act according to what Mizuki believed he would do if he did go with the original plan. At this point, Mizuki assaulted both Naruto and Aruka, in which Naruto managed to push Aruka out of the way and dodged the assault in time. I love logs. Naruto sighed in bliss. They're just everywhere. Amen replied all the ninja in the room. It was something of a fact of life that all ninja of Kano had developed a sort of worship for logs by the time they reached Chknin. Bloody ninja and their bloody logs. Grumbled one of the civilians. You say something? Growled Tsum. Moving on sweat dropped to Noichi, Naruto then proceeded to distract Mizuki, while Hinata and Kakashi secretly got into position to ambush him. During which, Mizuki broke the third's law about the Kikni by telling Naruto in an attempt to distract him and most likely take advantage of his would-be distress. Luckily it backfired as Naruto had already knew about his tenant and reacted by laughing and telling Mizuki so, causing him to be caught off guard by Kakashi and Hinata. Kakashi knocked Mizuki out quickly and Hinata paralyzed him so that he would not be able to escape should he regain consciousness. You all then proceeded to bring the traitor back to the Hokage where he is currently being interrogated by Ibiki while informing Aruka of what was happening along the way. While this was occurring, Kinoichi Anko Midarashi, Hana Inuzuka, Ikao Yuzuki, and Kuranaiki were busy under orders from Hokage-sama, distracting and guiding away angry mobs consisting of fellow ninja and villagers in order to provide the group safe passage through the village without incident. Those idiots were way too easy to trick. Anko chuckled as she got up, testing her body's functions. That is correct. Saratobi confirmed, ignoring Anko's statement. Word spread of Naruto's thievery much faster than I anticipated, and I was concerned that something may go amiss if the unknowing populace was left to their own devices. Fortunately for us, Anko and the others appeared before me soon after I started ordering people around, wondering what was going on and knowing that there was something else I wasn't telling. Anko and Hana had managed to convince Ikgao and Kurenai that something else was happening and gained their assistance in rerouting the villagers without much issue. Inoichi nodded, understanding what the Hokage was saying as he continued. You mentioned in the reports that you allowed Naruto and Hinata to learn a technique from the scroll. Do you think that is safe? What technique was it? Akashi I smiled. Considering the drastic increase in both of their chakra reserves, Naruto's lack of control, and the Haika clan's limitations on jutsu usage, I only thought it would be appropriate to teach them the shadow clone technique. Shadow clones. Hiashi gaped. Such a technique required a fairly large amount of chakra to perform. He knew that Hinata was more powerful yes, but to this extent. How many clones can they make, Kakashi? Asked Shmza, curious about the two skills now. Kakashi chuckled as he turned a page of his book. From what I have seen, Hinata can make roughly eight clones before she starts to feel the strain of the technique. Everyone stared at the blushing girl, impressed that she could make so many already. Eight clones Hiashi murmured as he activated his bloodline to look at his daughter's chakra coils in detail. He nearly gaped when he saw how developed they were. She has more chakra than the average chknin he whispered in shock. Oh yeah. Naruto said as if he just remembered something. What did that chakra sensor thing say was your chakra level Hinata? The bastard took me out of the classroom before I could see your turn. Hinata tried to shrink into her coat as she unintentionally started pressing her fingers together. 782, she mumbled. Needless to say this sparked much conversation in the room. Ha! <laughs> Chuckled Shikaku. I guess my son should have taken up Ghost on his offer. At least he'll get some decent training done if he becomes a genin. We haven't decided whether or not to approve of this special program in the first place Shikaku-san. Growled the Haruna representative. And why, dare I ask, wouldn't you? The lazy man countered in a tired tone. We have the results right in front of us. Two children who haven't even graduated from the academy have helped us take down a traitor. Both have shown us skills and talent that would suggest that they would already be ready for the Chknin exams if they were allowed to take them. Aside from a little trauma that comes from hanging around Anko too long, they are perfectly fine, if not better. Not only that, but they are learning from several teachers specialized in more than half of the fields that they could potentially go in. I don't know about you, but I personally want my kid to live long enough to give me grandkids. Shikamaru stared up to the sky from his bedroom window. 
I feel a disturbance. As if a thousand lazy single men were screaming at me in warning, and then silence. Troublesome. And then he rolled over and went back to sleep. The room was full of arguments from some of the louder council members, as the silent ones were talking with subtle shifting of the eyes and nudges of the head. As much as Dan's old ghost, this new program he had created was rather impressive and efficient, even if the subjects taking it still had their emotions running wild. He started to send his silent messages to his supporters in the council to approve of the plan. What does the plan entail? Shibi asked, getting everyone's attention. What sort of training does the final product produce? Tsuritobi sighed. Well, I was hoping to release this information later, but it seems that I don't have that luxury now. The plan itself is fairly straightforward. After the teams are formed, the active groups will follow a weekly schedule. Three days of the week will be the same as before, spending time focusing on doing missions and building trust with teamwork exercises. It is the other four days that will stray from the path. He looked around to make sure he had everyone's attention. These four days will consist of all the groups, their teachers, and several recommended ninja gathering together and providing a balanced education to the new batch of genin. Each teacher will cover the other's shortcomings to provide a more evenly spread out training regimen. I have seen a pattern where teachers who specialize in jinjutsu fail to properly educate students who are more suited for tojutsu and other similar cases. This plan aims to correct that. During these days, after their required training and all the mandatory fields is done, the students will split up and go to teachers that can better accommodate their own personal skills. The girls will most likely go to the jinjutsu, medical, poisons and stealth teachers most frequently, while the boys to the tojutsu and ninjutsu teachers. The benefit of this program is that the students pick the teachers for their additional lessons, allowing them to be more comfortable and progress farther in their training. Several grumbles of agreement sounded off in the room. Soom was still skeptical. If that is true, then what are Hana and Anko supposed to teach? Tsuritobi sighed. Hana and Anko were apparently handpicked, much like Naruto and Hinata, by Ghost as teachers, albeit they were thrown in a bit earlier than anyone had planned. Anko with her stealth, assassination, interrogation, poison, and yes, seduction skills, and Hana for her medic skills. According to Ghost, they have done almost as good as a job teaching as these two have been learning. It was also an experience for them to learn off of each other as well. I have noticed Anko occasionally reading some medical books, and Hana's stealth abilities have improved greatly. Damn straight. Anko laughed. I needed a refresher course in biology anyway. My poisons have been losing their potency recently, and what better way to make them better than to brush up on my medic skills. Now I can torture my prey nearly three times as long as I used to before they get close to dying. Yay. Hana Inuzuka isn't she the village's vet? Asked Mza, desperately trying to ignore Anko's recent statement, staring at the unnerved teen. It is precisely for that reason why he chose her in the first place. Saratobi said before Hana could embarrass herself in front of the council again. Ghost's logic was fairly simple. Because Hana deals with treating several different types of bodies on a daily basis, as well as originally learning about the human body, her knowledge of a fair amount of healing techniques, and the fact that her brother is in the next group of future potential genin, it inadvertently made her the best choice for the job. Because we are ninja, we will eventually have to deal with situations where the bodies of our opponents will be non-standard, perhaps even not entirely human. Hana's experience with various animal body types enable her to have a better understanding of what the various differences in organs and body structures will do and how they will perform in different configurations. While she may not have the most experience out of all the medic nin in the village, she is the one with the best chance of getting the children to learn what they need to. It's true. Naruto added in. Hana-sensei is a lot better than most of the teachers in the academy. It's easier to understand her, and she has no problem dumbing it down for someone like me, probably because Kiba is almost as dumb as I am. Hehe. <laughs> I'll never be good at medic stuff, but I at least want to know enough to have a decent impact on whether someone I care about lives or dies. Anada decided to add her own two cents into the mix. I'm also learning a lot from Hana-sensei. I am already able to use the mystic palm technique to an adequate level, and we both can do diagnostic jutsu with little trouble. We're already going over poisons and antidotes. Sensei is really impressed with my medicinal plant and herb knowledge. One counselor chuckled. It seems like Ms. Heike here got the better end of the deal. The blonde brat hasn't seemed to have improved that much, aside from being able to dodge better. Naruto pouted. HMPH. You're just saying that cause you don't know how much chakra I have. This had everyone's attention, as they had completely forgotten why Naruto was gone from school for three months in the first place. Er, how much do you have? Asked Sakura's mom, a bit scared to find out. Bakashi chuckled. Naruto here has close to 9,000 units of chakra, which puts his reserves o oh, around Hokage Samas during his prime, maybe a little less. He almost burst out laughing when he saw how many people were gaping. 
He also noticed Hiyashi hurriedly turning on his bloodline to get a better look at Naruto's chakra coils. To be honest, right before Iruka came, Naruto managed to test out the shadow clone technique at full blast. He made a little over a thousand clones. The kid is a pretty quick learner when someone is actually there to teach him and show him the way. I'm planning to use this new addition to his arsenal to our advantage during his training. By the time he graduates, I am assuming that his control should be at least low to mid-chknin, hopefully. I'm also thinking of starting him on elemental composition pretty soon as well. I checked his element a while ago and interestingly enough found that he's a wind type. Naruto was looking more and more like a hidden blessing to a good portion of the council by the second. So much chakra whispered a dazed Inoichi. With those reserves and the clones and a wind affinity to boot. What's so important about a wind affinity? Growled one oblivious counselor. Idiot. Sighed Shikaku. Wind elements are the rarest of the five affinities a ninja can have. It enables the user to become extremely dangerous in close to mid-range combat, which is pretty much where 80% of all fights take place. Even Suna has trouble producing a decent number of them, and they are known across the elemental nations for their wind techniques. To my knowledge, there is only one decent wind-aligned shinobi in Konoha. Asuma Siratobi, Hokage-sama's son. But more importantly, combining that level of chakra with a wind element, I don't want to even think about going against this kid when he finally gets some decent jutsu under his belt, the entire room turned its entire attention to Naruto at this point. Naruto and pretty much everyone else who knew about Rasen Shuriken were having a hard time keeping grins from appearing. He had practiced enough with Hinata and Ghost in keeping his emotions in check that only a true professional could tell what he was thinking by looking at him now. The Ashi, Inoichi, and Shikaku on the other hand were true professionals and saw this with their keen observational skills. They were also not complete idiots and knew that if they said anything about Naruto's behavior, then there would be an unequivocal shit fest that they would have to deal with on top of all the crap they had to deal with now. A quick glance at each other was all they needed to send the message to keep this quiet until later. Sigh. I don't think we are going home anytime soon if we keep on gawking at these children. Saratobi groaned while rubbing the bridge of his nose. I say we should just vote on it now and get it over with. All in favor. Almost all the hands in the room rose, including a good portion of the civilian council's hands. Tsum's hand reluctantly went up with them. And with that, the new training program has been approved. For now, Naruto, Hinata, Kakashi, Anko and Hana will continue their modified training schedules after the academy ends. However, now that it is known that Hinata is involved and has no more need to hide this, she may go to training as often as she wishes. Tsuritobi turned to Hiyashi. And just for future reference, Hinata is not under any obligation to tell you how she came up with her own techniques. Another part of this program was to motivate the students to attempt to create their own techniques and or styles. These personal attacks are deemed to be private jutsu and will only to be taught at the creator's behest. This is also done so that these new techniques can be used on the battlefield without getting recognized. Though clan techniques are indeed powerful, they are also well known and thus so are their weaknesses and flaws. I can tell you right now Hiashi that according to Ghost, Hinata here has created several new Jikan techniques thanks to the training and support she has received these past few months. He has also told me to tell you that Hinata is not allowed to teach anyone, especially your clan these techniques or anything else she has learned via this training until, and I quote. The letter is read and both sets join together. He said that you would understand what that meant because I sure as hell don't. The Ashi's face remained stoic as he translated the message and nodded. Nonetheless, I expect you and your clan to follow suit. The new program until it is put into motion, future personal jutsu, and everything else that occurred during this meeting Siratobi quickly made a signal to Tuanbu, who appeared behind the councilwoman that Hinata claimed had a kunai and poison on her person, knocked her out, and just as quickly disappeared, are now considered an A-class secret, punishable by interrogation, demotion, and a year's worth of D-rank missions. Am I understood? Yes, Hokage-sama. Chanted the majority of the people in the room. And with that I close this long and tiresome meeting. A.N. Slams head into desk, S.O.B. Thank you lord. It is late and I for one want to get some sleep. I have already sent out my anbu to spread word of Mizuki's betrayal and Naruto's participation, so there should be no issues going back home. That being said, Kakashi. Anko. You two are to guard Naruto tonight to make sure that nothing happens. Pine Kakashi sighed. Sure, it's not like I have anything better to do Anko grinned. And no forcing Naruto to give you any massages. Saratobi added in. Fuck. The snake mistress swore. With that, the council quickly disassembled with much grumbling. Hana was dragged back home by an aggravated Tsum almost immediately, same with Hinata via Hiyashi. As Naruto left with Anko and Kakashi, he noticed that a lot of the looks he was getting from the council were now not of fear and rage, but out of sheer curiosity. He realized that he had piqued their interest and it wouldn't take long for them to start truly looking at him and not the fox. 
Things were looking up. You have improved. Hiashi said to Hinata as they walked back to the compound. Yes, father. Hinata replied in a rather cold tone that did not escape Hiashi's notice. Sigh. You do realize that our night is only half over, correct? I am not worried, father. Hokage-sama gave us explicit orders, and not even the family council can override them. That's not going to stop them from trying to get you to slip up. The man stated with a hint of remorse. Why, father, it almost sounded like you cared about me for a moment. Hinata spat out venomously. The Ashi was getting nervous. What has gotten into you, Hinata? Three months should not have changed you this much. No, father. In reality, I have not changed much. However, I only learned about the Kikbi yesterday, and thus the reason why Naruto-kun suffers so much. This resulted in me losing a more than desirable amount of sleep last night. The special training that I have received these past few months has made my time at the academy nearly useless, thus making my time there a form of unintended torture. Then, there is my continually abysmal treatment at my so-called home, the only goal of which seems to be to crush my spirit in any way possible. Add all this to the fact that it is past 2 o'clock in the morning, and you might be able to see why I am so irritable at the moment. That being the case, can you really blame me for wanting Naruto-kun to give me a good back massage? Hinata calmly ranted. The Ashi made a mental note to never wake up Hinata early in the morning or try to sleep deprive her ever. Point taken. Several moments of silence. So he Ashi started, trying to make an effort to connect with his daughter again. You have made some new Ken techniques. Hinata smirked. Yes I have, father. I have made approximately five new ways to manipulate my chakra to deal various types of damage, including three ninjutsu, and have made some alterations to my stances and kata in order to make my Ken more natural for my body type. I have not fully mastered them all yet, but it is simply a matter of time before I do. The Ashi stared at his daughter in awe. Ghost had occasionally visited him and had ranted about her progress and her apparent skills, but he had thought that he was merely stretching the truth. He truly had made a mistake when it came to Hinata after her mother died. And that does not include the standard Jikan techniques I have mastered. Hinata grinned, causing her father to pale even more. As you saw during the meeting, I have also recently mastered eight trigrams. 32 palms, the shadow clone technique, and am currently working on the 64 palm variant. I also have quite easily mastered Katen as well. The Ashi had trouble breathing. Katen. You know how to do Katen. I only gave you the 32 palm scroll as something for you to work on in your spare time. Did you? Did Ghost? Anata laughed. Father, you put too much pride in our clan secrets. Ghost Sensei already heard of and understood the fundamentals of Katen before even coming into town. All anyone has to do in order to perform it is learn how to spin very fast and learn how to expel chakra through all your tenketsu quickly. The first was easily done by practicing how to dance, and the second was just as simple. All I needed to do was practice the leaf balancing technique on all my tenketsu at once and get decent at it. The only real reason why the Haika clan employs this technique while others don't is because we can determine the best time to use it thanks to our eyes. To be perfectly honest, I'm surprised no one else has managed to recreate the technique yet. It's not exactly that difficult. The Ashi mentally groaned. His daughter who everyone assumed was weak and pathetic, was constantly re-aiming his clan a new one and picking out major flaws in the family's tojutsu. This would not go well with the elders. Hinata smiled. Don't worry father, I assure you that I will be less abrupt when we deal with the clan council. The Ashi almost tripped. What? How did? The Haika clan are not the only ones who can tell what a person is thinking by reading body movement, father. Ghost Sensei had Naruto and I practice this fairly frequently during our training and often gave us tips on what to look for. He said he was disappointed that the clan has not developed this skill further. My announcement that my skills have developed was not a bluff and to be perfectly honest, you are pretty much an open book compared to Sensei. The Ashi chuckled. Hinata, a dead man is an open book compared to Ghost if he wanted to keep something quiet. It is not fair to compare me to him. Hinata stopped suddenly and stared at her father as if he was a stranger. Who are you and what have you done with my father? She asked coldly. The Ashi took a surprised step back. What? She continued her stare. My father never tells jokes. The Ashi needed several seconds to process what his daughter just said. He then rubbed his forehead as he remembered something that someone had told him in the past. Damn it Minato he Ashi sighed. Why did you have to be right? Excuse me? Hinata asked. Just remembering someone warning me a long time ago that my attitude on life in my clan would result in me being a poor father and a dull man. Hiashi admitted, growling the last part out to himself. Hinata giggled, which brightened up the mood considerably. You should listen to that man's advice more often then, father. The Ashi returned the smile. I'll keep that in mind. Then he went stoic again as the clan compound came into view. I will try to make this as quick as possible. 
try to keep your temper in check for a little while longer and don't say anything superfluous, and we should be able to go to sleep relatively soon. Anata took a deep breath to calm her nerves as they walked into the compound. Thank you daddy. One last question. Yes father? How strong are those two in particular? Anata smiled. From what I have seen father Naruto-kun is almost as strong as Hokage-sama when he is at his strongest. I see in the other. Hiyashi gulped. He had his guesses, but to be as powerful as the Hokage. The power of the Kikbi must be truly potent. Anata looked up to her father square in the face. I don't know exactly how strong he is, but when Hokage-sama talks to him I can see fear and uncertainty in his eyes. They trust each other to some degree, but it is still there. It makes you think, doesn't it? She said quietly. What kind of man does it take to make the god of shinobi himself display such levels of insecurity? This prompted Hiashi to once again wonder about his past actions regarding Ghost and whether it was a smart idea or not to deal with him in the first place. He could have sworn the asshole was laughing at him somewhere nearby. I don't like this growled Tsum as she dragged Hana back to the clan compound, their ninja hounds following them in fear of the clan leader's wrath. That man walks in here and starts changing things left and right without anyone knowing and then somehow manages to get everyone backing him up. And you. She turns her attention to her unnerved daughter, who flinched from her mother's wrath. You have been a part of this and you didn't tell me. Didn't I tell you to be careful of that man? Intentions aside, we don't know anything about him. He. Saved my life growled Hana, interrupting her mother's tirade. What? Asked a shocked Tsum. She turned to her daughter's ninja hounds. Is this true? Said triplets looked at each other briefly before slowly nodding. Hana paused a moment, getting an idea. A very risky and at any other time very stupid idea, but one that would hopefully some positive results later on. She looked around carefully to make sure no one was listening as walked up to one of her dogs and whispered something into its ear. The dog looked at Hana skeptically for a few seconds, then nodded before letting loose a series of growls and grunts. Tsum's eyes gradually widened as the coded story progressed. Every now and then the dog would look at Hana for permission to talk about something important, which was responded to by a simple nod or shake of her head. At one point, the dog was unconsciously shivering violently. By the time the dog stopped growling, Tsum was leaning against a nearby wall, trying to get her thoughts together. Kurumaru on the other hand was very tense, and his fur was standing on end. I like not the smell of this. He growled. So that time it was him. You were there. He's actually, Tsum whispered, not trusting her voice much at the moment. Yes, I was. Hana said in a slightly more stern tone to her mother. It's something he doesn't talk about much, and it doesn't take a haika to tell that it hurts him a lot to just think about it. Did he tell you how often? He told me that it is something his entire family goes through once a year with him being an exception. He has to go through it twice a year, and apparently his is the worst case out of all of them. Personally, I don't see how there could be anything worse than what I saw. Regardless, he doesn't use it as any sort leverage on Anko and I, and prefers to go through life as if it never happens. The true alpha indeed. Growled Kurumaru. The grey triplets on the other hand were arguing of all the times they had to maul Ghost to stop him from doing something silly perverted to Hana, which resulted with a tick mark on Tsum's head. Kurumaru laughed dryly. Like I said a true alpha indeed. Potential sexual assault aside Tsum growled as she leaned in close, when is it supposed to happen? The leading triplet growled in response, getting a decent response from the clan leader. Of course the timing would be perfect. She muttered to herself. I think this would be an appropriate time to let you know that it was several other members of my group that had been making all those pranks on the clan compounds, recently Hana added in quickly. They said it would be a good way to increase the training of the elites of the village without raising any suspicion. Soon was gaping at her daughter. You mean they were the ones who? The catnip, the squirrels, the deer, the glasses and walking sticks, the squirrels, the stink bombs she was interrupted as her mother clasped both her shoulders. Soon looked at her daughter square in the eyes. I don't know whether to thank you or maul you. Those were some of the best pranks I have ever been witness to, but the catnip one was one of the worst experiences of my life. Hana sweat dropped. In our defense, we didn't know that there were so many cats in the village. Tsum sighed in defeat as she turned to the Inuzuka clan compound. I can assume that you are preparing as well given what Hokage-sama told us in the meeting. Hana nodded. The triplets and I have improved greatly. Our Gatsuka are stronger than ever, and we have been testing out new formations. In addition to that, we have been doing extensive work on our chakra control and reserves. Our stealth is miles ahead of where it used to be, plus all four of us have started on elemental manipulation and composition. Tsum's eyes widened as she looked at her daughter and her partners. All four of you? Hana smirked. Yeah. Despite these three being triplets, two of them are fire elementals, while the other is a lightning elemental. I surprisingly enough have a wind affinity, so we are working on how to combine our techniques and our elements together. For now though, we are simply trying to manage our elements. 
Soon gawked at her daughter in awe. If she kept this up, she might just become the head of the Inuzuka clan years ahead of schedule. Despite what her initial impressions of Ghost were, she was backed into a corner and had to admit that so far he was doing nothing but helping Kanoha. She was going to have to talk to him when he got back. Just two more questions. Yes, mother. Hana asked a bit scared. How strong is he? Hana paused. I don't really know mom. From what Anko has told me his stealth and assassination skills are at least elite Jinin level, possibly even Kage level. He has said himself that his physical strength is only borderline Jinin at best, and from what I've seen he's not lying. His speed, agility, and skill are to put it lightly insane. There have been fights where I have gone all out against him and haven't got close to even scratching him, and he barely breaks a sweat. He also has enough stamina and chakra to produce a couple hundred shadow clones before feeling any strain. Tsum's eyebrow raised at this comment. But as far as powers go, he has made all of us swear to keep quiet until he tells us otherwise, I can only tell you that when I asked him about his incident, he hinted that it was what he had to pay for in exchange for them in the first place. She looked at her mother in the eyes. Just to let you know, this is S-class information mother. I'm already risking a lot by telling you. Don't tell anyone anything. Too much is at stake. Soon was silent for a period of time before she spoke again. I see. Hana sighed, releasing some of the tension that was stuck in her body. Um mom. What was your other question? Soon snapped out of her pondering before she looked at her daughter again. Hana didn't like that grin on her face. How good are his massages? Hana gulped. Please don't scare him away like you did with dad. Anzen was in his office thinking. Ever since his painful experience at the hands of Ghost, the Warhawk had been lying low, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. One would think that Ghost's departure from the village would provide him an opportunity to do something radical, but he knew that it was futile at this point. Ghost knew too many of the cards in his hand, and he knew barely any in his. No. He would wait, watch and learn. See what makes him tick. Find any weaknesses. Ghost's lecture still ringing in his head, a painful lesson he would not soon forget. You don't know who I am. You don't know what I do. You don't know what I can do. You don't know what I want. You don't know my family, and you don't know me. In short, you have nothing on me. You can't hold anything over my head, you can't provide me with anything I don't already have, and you are far too weak to even try to force me to do anything. Arrogant brat. Curse the old man as his temper rose. I'll play your game for now, but you better be prepared for this to bite you in the ass one day. Ghost sneezed. Ha. Huh. Someone who I am vastly superior to must be bound to kill me, again. Meh. If a person were to ask anyone in the group that day how they slept it would most likely be the last thing they would ever say. Naruto, Kakashi, and Anko were busy keeping vandals, villagers, and mentally impaired ninja away from Naruto's apartment that night. Apparently the Hokage's word, proof from the traitor's mouth, and being protected in person by the copy nin and the snake mistress themselves, were not enough to convince them that Naruto had actually done the village a favor, and thus the three spent the night knocking out villagers, flaring killing intent, and playing hot potato with several Molotov cocktails. Hinata did not fare much better. Despite her father's promise, the elder council was adamant on getting Hinata to spill what she had learned after she gave them a vague list of her skills, even going so far as to suggest putting the caged bird seal on her. The response to that was Hiashi activating his Byakugan and verbally re-aiming them a new one, while stating for the final time that she was under protection from the Hokage and that any attempt to force information out of her would harm the clan's image and honor greatly. The Hokage was not allowed to interfere with clan politics, true, but the same could be said for the reverse logic. Even if the shinobi were part of a clan, the family's politics could not touch anything that the Hokage had deemed off-limits. When boiled down to its basest elements, it really just ended up as a race to see who got to who first. And people said that politics had to be complicated. Then when the matter of Naruto came up, the chaos started all over again. Hinata knew that she could not out loud speak of the Kikbi, so she merely stated to their faces that she knew what they were talking about when they said that he was dangerous. She then gave them the kunai and the scroll lecture, and then informed them that they should at least attempt to know someone before coming to any conclusion. She was so tired and pissed at this point that when she got into the unofficial haika stare-off with the elders, which was pretty much like any other animalistic practice for assuming the dominant position. Surprisingly enough, many of the elders were the ones who showed weakness first. The rest she simply stalemated with. After she had started to creep out about half the council, Hinata simply smiled sweetly, scaring the shit out of the rest of them. Hiashi finally stepped in, to Hinata's relief, and concluded the meeting, stating that due to the circumstances and the proof that Hinata was becoming far more competent than expected, they would allow her to continue to practice with Naruto Uzumaki until either she graduates with her genin team or evidence showed that it would be unwise for her to do so. Shikamaru woke up that night to his mother screaming again. 
This time she was ranting that his father had told her that he had turned down special training that would have made him far more competent just because he said that he would make it look bad. Needless to say, Shikamaru was cursing a fair amount that night. Anna had gotten off easy. After she had explained as much as she could to her mother, they spent several hours debating about what they should do next, finally settling on Hana's weight and see what Ghost's plans are for God's sake idea, supported by the fact that everyone that matters is already following it. Saratobi had probably the worst out of all of them, as he spent the rest of the night and a good part of the morning going over the paperwork with Hamura and Kaharu. The Hokage was starting to think that his old teammates were vampires from their apparent ability to work without sleep, so much so that near the end of the workload, he was occasionally trying to flick bits of garlic into their mouths whenever they talked. Needless to say, they got the hint that he wanted some sleep and resigned to his wishes. All of them were glad that horrendously long day was over. Scabbard was resting near a river, plotting his next few hundred moves. Though he did get an impressive amount of information from Arachimaru's computer database, he had not yet been able to go in depth until just a few moments prior, and what he found was very interesting. The next Ai is in the next chapter. Ha. Despite the fact that Mizuki was taken off to prison, the academy resumed the next day as if nothing had ever happened. Parents took their children to the building without missing a beat, pretending that the mold of normalcy was not temporarily shattered the previous night, and the blissfully unaware children were sitting next to and chatting with their friends. That is until Naruto, Hinata, and Shikamaru entered the classroom looking like zombies. Shikamaru and Naruto barely managed to sit in their respective chairs before falling asleep on their desks. Hinata in particular looked bad as she was frequently twitching and looking around the room as if she was about to be assaulted by a family of Kikbi. How they managed to look presentable in public was beyond their observers. While Shikamaru was known for falling asleep in class, the rest of the children were more focused on Naruto and Hinata. Naruto was practically famous for being an unstoppable ball of rabid energy, no matter what time it was, and Hinata was supposed to be almost invisible most of the time instead of a child on the brink of snapping someone's neck. Yet as they contemplated this, said blonde was out clearly out cold on his desk, his face already half immersed in a puddle of drool, mumbling something about Raymond, while Hinata was constantly moving in a violent and irregular manner every time a small sound went off. That was hard to simply ignore. Hey Hinata. Ino asked, somewhat eager to be the first one to know what was wrong with the Haika heiress. What she didn't expect was for Hinata to literally jump back a few meters from her chair in response. Needless to say, more eyes were on the poor girl, and her instability grew further. Oh oh Ino-san. Hinata managed to breathe out in relief. You okay? Ino asked, knowing that she obviously wasn't. Why yeah? Hinata chuckled nervously. W why wouldn't I be? Ino deadpanned. Well for one thing, you're acting more nervous than usual. I haven't seen anyone this freaked out since Chujai's dad banned him from snacks for a week. The two looked at said overweight boy as he checked if Shikamaru had a pulse. I it's nothing are really. Hinata stammered, not really faking it at the moment due to her shot nerves doing the work for her. I I just haven't h had much sleep are recently and it's s starting to get to me. Oh Ino replied disappointedly. Okay then. I hope you get some soon though. You look like a wreck. Thanks I Ino san. Hinata replied a bit distracted as she turned her head to look at Naruto sleeping next to her. An. For all intents and purposes, the seating in the room was changed while Naruto was away, so that Naruto is now sitting next to Hinata. This had Ino's interest not that Hinata had a crush on Naruto that was old news, but that Naruto was out cold. Though she hadn't noticed before, she remembered that Naruto was almost never tired unless he was bored out of his mind, and that was before his change, which she had to admit was an improvement. Now if only he would wear something other than that horrible orange jumpsuit regardless, the fact that he was completely out of it was something that the female blonde decided to invest her time in investigating. Hey. Ino whispered, getting another flinch out of Hinata. What do you think his problem is? Naruto's never that tired. Not even after that extreme all-day training exercise that Iruka-sensei made us do at the beginning of the year. Hinata mentally scoffed. That extreme all-day training session was nothing compared to what she did every day, although she doubted that most people had trained with Ghost and Anko as teachers. I don't know. Hinata half lied. She was a bit confused as to why Naruto was so out of it herself. There must have been more trouble with the villagers that night than she thought. M maybe a Anko san got to Naruto kun again l last night. Ino paled. That would do it. She replied before giving her fellow blonde a look of pity, before walking back to her seat to talk to Sakura. Despite their rivalry, when things were calm the two were almost friendly with each other. Nice save. Whispered Naruto from his sleeping position, making Hinata almost jump a meter out of her chair. You were awake? She asked quietly. Naruto chuckled. Hiro Nai's taught me this trick to hover between sleeping and awake. You managed to get some rest, yet you are still aware of most of the things around you activate your Byakugan for a sec, I wanna show you this other trick that he taught me. 
Hinata hesitated for a moment before turning on her eyes and quieting a gasp. Luckily, no one heard her. The air in the classroom was laced with Naruto's chakra almost exactly like how Ghost conditioned the air around him all the time. Yu Hao. Naruto smiled. I slowly push my chakra out of my entire body and use my sage training and wind element training in conjunction to extend my presence, as Hironai calls it, into the surrounding air. It took me a while to get used to it and I still have trouble managing to process the new information sometimes, but it's almost like I can see all around me as if I had the Byakugan. I could tell that Ino was walking towards you even though I was almost asleep. Apparently this trick acts like a seventh sense, so most Jinjutsu are useless against it because they weren't designed to trick it. Hiro Nai told me that there are a lot of other things that it can do, but I have to find most of them out by myself before he'll teach me some of the good stuff. Also, even with my large reserves I can't do it all the time. The longest I can go without wiping myself out is about 5 hours in a place that I haven't done this trick before. 18 if I have. Still, it's a pretty awesome trick. Anata gaped at Naruto in awe. Not only did he now have an absurd number of powerful jutsu under his belt, in addition to his mind-blowing stamina and chakra reserves, as well as a fighting style that was difficult to predict let alone defend against, but now he had an ability that rivaled her family's jutsu when it came to sensing the surrounding area combine, that with the fact that he treats women with respect, is secretly the son of the fourth, something that she still doesn't know yet, and happens to have a well, she has used her byakugan a lot when spying on him for more than one reason. Did she know how to pick them or what? Hey Naruto asked, snapping Hinata out of her stupor, why are you so out of it? That meeting with the elders shouldn't have gone that long. Hinata took a deep breath before smiling sweetly at Naruto. Naruto-kun, two days ago, I found out about your secret, about the Akatsuki, about Orochimaru, and about what I was about to go up against. I obviously didn't get much sleep that night. What you may have forgotten was that I still had to go to the academy while you trained, which I might add has become quite frustrating and dull, compared to what I do with you and the others. Then we had last night, in which after I stood up in front of the entire village council, I went back home to deal with the Haika family council. I did not get to bed until 5 this morning and have only just recently realized the severity of my actions the girl was now leaking out enough killing intent to be detected by most of the class. Luckily, no one, aside from Shikamaru, was good enough to tell it was coming from her. Naruto was starting to sweat profusely as the very intimidating shadow behind his secret girlfriend grew larger and scarier by the second. Naruto-kun, Hinata smiled sweetly to him not fooling anyone. I think the first thing we will be practicing after class is your interrogation tactics. Is there a problem with that? And no, ma'am. Naruto whimpered, coming to an epiphany as to why Ghost, Jiraiya and Sasuke were all scared shitless of women above all else. Speaking of tired. Hinata continued, in a rage temporarily forgotten, why are you tired? What happened after the meeting? Naruto grunted in irritation. The idiot villagers and some demented chknin who apparently didn't bother to hear what really happened last night. Anko, Kakashi Sensei and I spent the entire night defending my apartment complex from getting torn down or set on fire. Since I'm not a legal ninja yet, I'm not allowed to do anything aside from the Academy 3 outside of the Academy or the training grounds, so no shadow clones. All I can say is that it's going to be a while before I can look at a bottle of alcohol without expecting it to explode into flames. The two spent the rest of their time waiting for Iruka resting, not giving a second glance at who came in. Even when Sasuke arrived, followed by his usual heart of fangirls, the two made no gesture to recognize his arrival. Sasuke in turn did nothing to show that he had cared, although he did give a curious and slightly irritated glance at Naruto for a few seconds before going to his seat, where Sakura and Ino once again brawled it out for the one chair next to him. When Iruka finally came into the classroom and observed the three's performance, he pretty much shrugged and let them all sleep. He knew that Naruto and Hinata had had a rough night in general and was questioning whether or not they would show up for class in the first place. As for Shikamaru well, he's always asleep. Naruto was looking a bit pale and sweaty though. All right class Aruka called out, only to be ignored by pretty much everyone there. Class. No response. Aruka twitched a little as he prepared for his signature technique, the giant head technique. Shut up and sit down. Instant results. Works every time. As I was saying, I have a few important announcements to make before we start off the day. This had the class's attention, as normally Aruka went straight to taking attendance. Due to an unfortunate accident, Mizuki-sensei will not be teaching you for the rest of the year. Because of the circumstances of the incident, I would like for you to respect Mizuki's privacy and not ask what had happened, as it is a bit embarrassing for him to talk about. Nice cover. Thought Naruto, Hinata, and Shikamaru, who had already figured out what had happened the previous night after seeing Naruto's and Hinata's condition that morning. So does that mean that you're going to be teaching all of us by yourself for the rest of the year, Haruka-sensei? Sakura asked curiously. 
No, it doesn't Sakura, Hiruka answered. Hokage-sama said that the problem will be taken care of in a couple more days, so I'll only be doing the solo stuff until then. He then smiled sweetly as he raised his killing intent a bit. However, I do hope you don't expect to get a lighter workload with only one teacher now right? A unanimous silent nod was the collective response of the rest of the class. Hehehe. <laughs> I still got it. The day was going pretty much as usual despite Naruto's return presence. Hiruka had allowed the poor blonde to sleep in class, knowing that he must have had a rough night. When one of his other students asked him why he was allowing Naruto to slowly flood the room with a steady supply of drool, Hiruka shrugged and replied that if Naruto was that tired, then he must have done something truly exhausting within the past few hours and that they should leave him be. Besides, the particular subject he was covering at the moment was most likely something that Naruto knew already if what Kakashi had told him was correct. Inada seemed a bit jumpy, but if even a tenth of the rumors about what happened last night in the council chambers were true, then he would be too. Kakashi had told him enough to know that the girl had done something pretty radical in the chambers and it seems the rush had worn off during the night. It was only reasonable that he didn't call on her to answer a random question during the day. The rest of the class however, minus Shikamaru, who was pretty much as dead as Naruto, was constantly sneaking glimpses at the blonde, the previous day still fresh in their minds. There's no way the dobe has more chakra than me, let alone a jinin. Look at him, trying to look cool and upstage Sasuke kun, cha. I don't think I drool that much even when it's all you can eat night at Ichirakus. My insects are telling me that he is constantly releasing an incredible amount of chakra into the air, so is he asleep or is he just fooling us? Drone. Now that I'm paying more attention, the dead last scent is way stronger than it was before. Sorry for doubting you yesterday, Akamaru. Still, it doesn't mean anything if he can't do anything with his chakra yet. I'm still top dog. Drone. Master is letting his ego get the better of him again. Whatever, I'm just glad that the alpha with the snake scent is gone. I wonder what happened to Loud Fox. He is obviously the alpha male in this back now, but why does he not act like it? Soft Hand seems to have gotten stronger as well, but she is very nervous about something, and they have their scent on each other. Are they mates? Hana-san and the triplets have been carrying their scent as well lately, as well as that odd empty scented man's. Maybe this is one of those ninja secret things that Kurumaru-sama was talking about earlier. I should ask him about it later. All right, class. Hiruka said rather loudly, snapping everyone out of their stupor and waking Naruto and Shikamaru up somewhat. We're going to go outside now for some kunai throwing and jutsu practice. Follow me. Once outside, the class lined up like they had every practice day for the past few years, there was one line in front of each target dummy, which were a dozen meters away, and each line had two cases in front of it, one of assorted kunai, and the other had shuriken. A few meters behind the row of dummies was an earthen mound, large enough that it would take a truly terrible throw for a weapon to go off range. Naruto and Shikamaru were at the end of their lines due to lack of motivation, while Hinata was in the middle of another. Each student threw 10 kunai and 10 shuriken before retrieving their equipment and going to the end of the line. Their training was at a point where they could walk onto the range without fear of getting stabbed by their classmates by mistake well, except for maybe Naruto before his change. A.N. I'm not saying he was terrible, I'm just saying that he was easy to distract when he was that age. Okay. Uruka called out. Begin. The steady and repetitive sound of rod iron embedding itself into wood echoed throughout the courtyard as the several dozen children hurled their projectiles at their targets. Sasuke of course got a near-perfect score, only missing with the last two shuriken and kunai by a few inches. After which came his routine cheering squad with love confessions and swoons. One could actually set a watch to their activities if they knew what to look for. Anada managed to get a solid 8 with both weapons, which somewhat impressed Aruka considering her fragile state of mind at the moment. As the day continued, Aruka noted the scores of his students. The rough average for the class was about 6 to 7 hits and almost hits of both kunai and shuriken on the practice dummies, which was also the pass-fail line when the exams finally came around. While it was true that the main deciding factor in whether a student passed or failed the genin exams was being able to perform the Academy 3, the students also had to pass a minimum number of required tests and basic ninja skills. Said tests included physical fitness, weapon skills, tojutsu efficiency, jinjutsu, academics, teamwork, first aid, poisons, stealth, traps, chakra control and reserves, and so on. Personally, Iruka felt that the physical and more practical subjects should count a bit more towards graduation and overall standing in the class, but the council had decided to make things easier for those who didn't have clans to support and teach them. His wandering thoughts were interrupted when he saw Naruto drag himself up in front of his line. His fellow students on either side ran to get their equipment back from their dummies or simply waited for him to finish before retrieving theirs. Training or not, no one wanted to be downrange of a Naruto that was having trouble keeping his eyes open, let alone standing. 
As Naruto bent down to pick up his first round of kunai and shuriken, Sakura laughed. Ha! Watch out everyone. Naruto's throwing now. Well this did get a response from a good portion of the class, those who were paying attention noticed that it was significantly less than when they'd mocked him before. Many of the students were looking at Naruto carefully as he pulled out his first kunai sluggishly and turned to his target with less interest than Shikamaru had for Ino. An. Yes yes I did just do that. While everyone was looking at Naruto with some interest though, Hinata was the only one who managed to catch a very slight twitch at the corner of his lips. Whatever it was she knew that it wasn't going to be subtle. Naruto yawned as he lazily threw his first kunai at the test dummy. Sasuke smirked. The blade was going way too slow to stick into the wood, even if the idiot did manage to hit the. His thoughts were interrupted as said kunai did in fact hit a vital spot on the dummy and proceeded to go straight through it like water, out the other side and up to the ring in the earthen mound behind it. Needless to say, everyone watching was speechless for one reason or another. What was that? Ino asked in a daze as Naruto threw another kunai, giving a repeat performance as it went through another vital point. He's not even throwing that hard mumble chinjai as he slowly ate his chips in awe. Wind manipulation whispered Aruka as a shuriken flew through the dummy, this time not really hitting any vital points, but going through all the same. By the time the fifth kunai passed through the dummy, Aruka finally snapped out of his stupor. Naruto. He called out. HN. Naruto grunted as he turned his head to his teacher, eyes still half closed. What's up Aruka sensei? Can you tell me why you are using wind element composition on your kunai and shuriken? Aruka asked, somewhere between stern and in a daze. What are you talking about, sensei? Naruto asked, a little more awake now. I'm not he looked at his dummy and saw the holes that he'd created and the projectiles behind it. Crap. Sakura laughed nervously, not believing what she had just heard. Haruka sensei you can't be serious can you? Naruto being able to use elemental composition. And wind of all elements. Haruka sighed. How else could you explain what you just saw, Sakura? He was using the same kunai and shuriken as everyone else, and he wasn't doing any hand signs or anything suspicious that would indicate otherwise. In fact, it was almost as if he was augmenting them by pure reflex he turned to Naruto. Another part of your special recovery training Naruto. He asked skeptically. Fully awake, said blonde laughed nervously while scratching the back of his head. Err yeah. Hiro Nai noticed I had a wind affinity near the end of the first month and he decided to train me in it. He was pure evil when training me, but apparently Kakashi sensei told me that I was learning a lot faster than most people did for some reason. After I managed to cut a leaf in half, Hiro Nai forced me to learn how to augment kunai and shuriken with my chakra until it was practically instinct for me. And I do mean forced, under punishment of exploding model cows the cows, everywhere no escape Naruto started to shiver and assumed the fetal position as everyone watching sweat dropped. This ghost guy was apparently not only a slave driver but was completely insane as well. Um Kiba sounded off, gaining everyone's attention. Mental breakdown aside, what's so special about elemental composition and the dead last being a wind element? Ino groaned. Pay more attention in class mutt. Elemental composition is normally only taught to chnin level and above ninja because it requires a certain level of focus and chakra reserves. Normally, it takes years for a person to master an element. Naruto's stunt with his wind element showed us that he's already at least halfway done mastering it. As for why him being a wind element is such a big deal why don't you know? It was on last week's test and was one of the first things we were taught when we covered the five elements. Wind is the rarest element a ninja can be aligned to. Apparently it's so uncommon that even Suna has problems producing ninja that specialize in wind release. She turned to Naruto, still in his assumed position. If the idiot has already mastered his element by this much already, I might have to have some second thoughts about his potential as a ninja, if he ever grows up that is. Why yes Sakura stammered, still in denial, but it still doesn't compare to what Sasuke Kun can do. He's a fire affinity, remember? Fire beats wind. Several of Sasuke's fangirls nodded and cheered for their spokeswoman. Unfortunately for them, they didn't notice the small grin on Naruto's face. Oh, how little they know. Flashback, Naruto and Ghost were sitting by the river, watching the scenery around them and trying to ignore the several thousand clones training several hundred yards away from them. It was a week before Ghost had to leave and they were going over what Naruto had learned the past few months. Naruto had noticed that Ghost was occasionally getting more serious than normal more to the point and less joking around. Kid. Ghost muttered, breaking the meditation silence between the two. You're pretty much done with your beginning sensory training. You know how to release your chakra from your body and you're on your way to managing how to sort out the information you are receiving from your sense as well as making your chakra last longer in the air and being able to let out the juice for longer periods of time. Naruto felt a swell of pride inside of him. The training was very difficult, so much so that he doubted that he would have been able to get it right if he hadn't had sage and wind element training beforehand. 
yet now he was almost able to get it down enough to use it in battle, if not as efficiently as Ghost could. To be honest, you're the first person I've taught this to. Everyone else that I've had under my wing were either aligned to a different element, not as in tune with nature, or didn't have the reserves to pull something like this off. Naruto smiled. However, this is only the first step. You have no idea what this ability is capable of in the hands of a master, aka me, but for now let me show you some of this ability's greatest flaws and in turn strengths. Ghost raised his clenched fist, palm up, and slowly opened his hand. While well, Naruto's eyes perceived nothing, his seventh sense went haywire as a large fear appeared over his teacher's hand. Tell me, what do you see? Naruto paused for a few seconds and attempted to figure out what Ghost had just done. I don't know Ironai. My sense is showing me a huge ball above your hand, but my eyes see nothing. Ghost smiled. That's because your eyes are correct. What lies above my hand is a huge space of nothing. No air, no dust, no solids, no liquid. Nothing. The ball disappeared slowly. Right now, when you use your sense, kid, all you are doing is telling yourself where the air around you is located. No more, no less. While this may help you against Injutsu users, this technique is nearly useless against people who specialize in earth style and also water style specialists who prefer to attack from below. All your sense will detect is where the ground is, not what's below it. It also won't help you if you are trying to look in a room or area that is sealed off from your location. In addition, at your current level, this skill can also be mitigated by other wind users and fire users, as they can blow away or burn the air you've conditioned. Even I can't tell what lies in the center of a large enough fire or explosion, and a strong enough wind can also throw me off a bit if I'm not careful. Naruto stared at Ghost in concentration, absorbing all the information like a sponge. But if that's true, how did you stop that fire-style technique when you saved me from the mob a few months ago? Ghost smirked. Before I answer your question Naruto, let me ask you this. What three things must be present in order for fire to occur? Naruto frowned as he recited the basic physics principle. That's easy. Fuel, heat, and oxygen. And what did I just do just a few moments ago? You made a ball of nothing Naruto's eyes widened. I assume you understand where I'm going with this. You made a huge ball of nothing in front of the fire technique to suffocate the technique cancelling it out, even though you're a wind element Naruto explained in awe. Ghost chuckled. Not quite. It wasn't a ball of nothing, but I did make it pretty damn huge. He turned his head to the river. Air is one of the most versatile elements in existence. While it is true that a master of an element can defeat someone who has a type advantage over them if they play their cards right, the rule is multiplied by an ungodly amount when it comes to air. For example, by being able to make voids I have already made myself almost completely immune to mid to long range fire, wind and electric style attacks that do not have mediums, such as shuriken or oil. You might not know this, but electricity requires a sort of medium in order to work, like air or water. That's the main reason why lightning is so potent. Because it has to use such a weak medium to cross the huge gap between the clouds and the ground, it needs an incredible charge in order to establish a link. This is also the reason why lightning tends to strike the highest possible points. Using this logic, a shield of nothing is in theory the best possible way to defend yourself against almost any sort of ranged lightning style attack. Likewise, shockwaves are simply large clustered groups of gas particles that are traveling in a single direction. If a void is between you and a shockwave, the displaced air would simply fill in the void and leave you untouched. Ghost turned to Naruto again. This is another reason why you're going for Earth as your second element. With air alone under your belt and my training, you have already gained an advantage over three of the five main elements in this world. With Earth, you have an advantage over four, with the fifth being an element that you control. Your next step in training is to familiarize yourself with the air currents around you and manage to control them to a decent degree. I'm not telling you to be able to be able to create monsoons that stuff is beyond your capability, but I do expect you to be able to create at least a strong wind in any direction within your range. Don't expect to get this quickly either. It took me a fucking long time to master this skill, so don't get discouraged if you can't get it right in a few months, even with clones. Also remember to experiment a bit with this ability, as there are many tricks you can do with it that I haven't told you about. When you are finally able to create voids, I will teach you the first original ninjutsu I have or will create. From what I understand, this jutsu will be the first one in your world that will earn the category of mass assassination. Ghost frowned as Naruto started to drool. Despite all of this, you must remember that there will be people that will be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against you. While I seem a bit overconfident and stupid at times, I have learned to never underestimate my opponents. But what about those times that Anko and Hana-sensei beat you up hand? Ghost smiled. I said I never underestimate my opponents, brat. I never said that I always tried my hardest to come out on top. Sometimes you gain more from losing than you do from winning. It's a humbling experience and it prevents your head from getting too big. 
otherwise, it eventually gets harder for you to lose than it does to win. Naruto smirked. I'll keep that in mind. Ghost frowned again. One last thing. If you do manage to be able to create voids while I'm gone, do not under any circumstances use them on other people, unless it is part of a technique I show you. I am saying this as a friend and as your mentor. The voids are only to be used for defensive purposes. If you do use them as a sort of attack, I will stop training you immediately and will never aid you in your future exploits. Got it. Naruto froze as Ghost leaked some of his killing intent or presence as he called it. Swallowing heavily, the blonde nodded. Crystal, Hiro Nai. Alright Rukamon gaining everyone's attention again. Since everyone is pretty much done with their throwing practice, let's get started on sparring. As for partners. I'm fighting you, dope. Sasuke said almost immediately, gaining everyone's attention. The teacher sighed. He knew it would come to this. Sorry Sasuke, but Naruto isn't sparring with anyone for a couple more months. I have instructions from Kakashi that say that Naruto isn't allowed to do any sort of combat training aside from Kata due to his body still adjusting to his change. He looks fine to me Kiba said, completely ignoring the fact that Naruto was still in the fetal position. Iruka shrugged. I'm just doing what I'm told. If you want to take it up with Hokage-sama and Kakashi-san, be my guest. But in the meantime, I expect you to follow my instructions. Sasuke frowned as Iruka started calling out pairings. Are you sure that this is okay? A somewhat nervous Kurenai asked a relaxed Hana and Anko as they waited for Kakashi and Naruto and eventually Hinata. What are you so uptight for? Anko asked. You're gonna be a Jinin instructor for the next batch of Jinin, right? It's only fair that you get some practice in before you get stuck with the real thing. Yeah, Kurenai. Hana agreed, temporarily stopping from trying to cut a leaf in half with her chakra. Her dogs were attempting to do similar feats with the leaves that they held in their mouths, only they were trying to set theirs on fire or make it crinkle like aluminum. It's not really a big deal. Akashi san has been involved longer than we have, and even though he's always late when no one is looking after him, he's still getting better at teaching ninjutsu. Same with Anko and her hunting skills, and me with my medic practice. Teaching is actually a great way to brush up on the basics. In the meantime, we're trying new things out. I'm already close to getting the hang of cutting my leaf in half, and my triplets are close to finishing the first step of their training as well. Gurunai sighed. That's not it, it's just wait, your ninja hounds are doing elemental training too. Is that possible? Hana shrugged. Why not? They can focus chakra, can't they? The only reason why most people, including my clan, don't think that they can is because no one has thought about it before and assumes that they can't because they don't have hands to do signs with. We were always too preoccupied with trying to do combination and physical attacks. It also doesn't help that a good portion of my family tend to have short fuses, so elemental training is almost impossible for them or their partners. To be honest, I think it's a great advantage for someone like me. I have three partners, and when all of our training is complete, we'll have three different elements to wield. Ghost Kun has already given me some good ideas for some new techniques. Kurenai sighed. Again with that ghost guy. Enko chuckled. So what? We're still not as bad as when Ikgao got together with Haid, and at least we have the nerve to admit that we like him unlike someone else we know regarding a certain son of a certain Kage. Kurenai blushed a hue to match her ruby eyes. F fine I'll keep quiet about him for now. She took a deep breath and calmed herself but I still want to know what this group thing is all about. I know for a fact that there is more to it than what you're telling me, and I'm still skeptical about what the story behind this ghost guy is. Well of course there's something else to us. Anko shrugged as she started her chakra control exercises. But that doesn't mean we're gonna tell you. Like we said before, the old man's made this stuff an S-rank secret, and personally I'm surprised that Hana and I are even allowed to know even half the stuff they told us. Ugh. Don't remind me. Hana shivered. I'm still having trouble trying to get sleep at night, wimp. I for one haven't slept so well in a long time. Of course you would growl the Inuzuka. Um. Hi. Kakashi deadpanned as he and Naruto observed the spectacle, drawing the three women's attention to the two males. Did we miss something important? Yeah, and why is Kurenai sent here? Naruto asked, a tad bit on edge. Kurenai noted this as Anko replied. What? Since Ghost is gone and everyone important already knows about the new training program, I thought it would be a good chance to get Nai-chan here, some practice training brats before she becomes an actual teacher. How do you know who I am? Kurenai asked Naruto inquisitively, careful to read his every movement. Naruto stepped back in apparent nervousness. WH what are you talking about? You're Kurenaiki, right? Jinjutsu mistress of Konoha. I've heard people talking about you occasionally. Red eyes, long bushy black hair, great figure, huge raw crap I wasn't supposed to say that part. Gurunai's eyebrows twitched in annoyance as Anko and Hana tried not to laugh. Keyword. Tried. 
Out of the corner of her eyes, she saw Kakashi slowly edging away from her line of sight. Oh? And who may I ask said all this Naruto-kun? Just to let you know I'm quite good at telling when someone is lying. She asked with a sweet smile that was nowhere near enough to distract everyone from the evil-looking shadow behind her. Kakashi could have sworn the thing was looking in his direction. Kakashi sensei Naruto said without a moment's hesitation. Anko and Hana and her three hounds were on the ground laughing their asses off while said pervert was glaring at his student. I remember this. He growled as Kurinai turned her attention to him, which prompted the legendary copy Nin to run for the safety of his ass. And Anko sensei and Hana sensei. Naruto finished his sentence with a sick grin on his face. The three women still present turned their attention back to Naruto, in which Kurinai merely gaped at the boy as the other two laughed even louder. W what? Kurinai stuttered. What? Kakashi sensei talked about your figure and your skill with Injutsu, Hana sensei talked about your looks and your figure, and Anko sensei well you should know that she talks about whatever the heck she feels like. You're damn straight I do. Anko confirmed. Kurinai face palmed. Then why did you wait to say Hana's and Anko's names? Naruto did his fox smile. And Miss Kakashi sensei running away like a little girl. Careful kid Anko chuckled. Keep acting like that and you might scare Hanada away. This caught Kurinai's interest. Han laughed. Not if she doesn't scare him away first. The girl's been getting scarier and scarier lately, though I don't blame her. With keeping all this crap a secret, going to the academy where they only teach dated theories and history, and then dealing with her clan. I would have gone nuts a long time ago. Who said I haven't already? Said Hanada, appearing from out of some nearby bushes, scaring nearly everyone there except Naruto, who had his seventh sense up and thus was smart enough to not say anything. Kurinai had been seeing less and less of Hinata recently, as she had been constantly been going to her training sessions after school. However, what she had seen and what she was seeing right now was a stronger young girl who believed in herself, though she still looked mostly the same. Hinata didn't make any motion that Kurinai was there as she walked straight towards Naruto and started to drag him away by the collar of his shirt. Naruto-kun, I believe that you promised to interrogate me today after class. Naruto was silently crying to himself as he saw Hana and Anko struggling to breathe at this point. Yes ma'am. He said as he made the cross hand symbol for the shadow clones and made his standard 2000 plus clones. Said clones stood at attention and saluted their doomed comrade as he was dragged deeper into the woods. Needless to say, Kurinai was speechless at what she just seen. What just happened? Let's see. Anko managed breathe out, smiling so wide it was a surprise her face didn't break. Hinata Haika just arrived completely undetected, scaring the living shit out of all of us. She then proceeded to drag away her lifelong crush and future boyfriend by the scruff of his neck, scaring him into giving her a back massage. Lucky brat. Anyways, said blonde idiot, while being dragged away, produced several thousand shadow clones for training purposes, which they are about to do right now. We may have hidden how much Naruto has learned to the council in order to keep this program up. Kakashi added, popping out from the same bushes that Hinata did just moments before reading his book. Kurinai turned to Anko, ignoring the cyclops for the moment. Wait massage. As in like the ones that Ghost gives you too. Hana shrugged. Yeah, pretty much. Ghost told us that the kid was good enough to practice it on people a couple of days ago, and today is really the first chance he's gotten to test it out on Hinata. He said that Naruto still got away to go before he's good enough to make a girl climax, Kurinai noticed a blush on the two women's faces. But he is apparently good enough to give a really good relaxing massage. Which is apparently something Hinata desperately needs at the moment, judging from the rings under her eyes. Tell me about it. Anko groaned. Just a couple of days ago she figured out why her crush was treated like shit all his life. If it wasn't for Ghost, who knows how things would have ended up. Kurinai's eyes widened. She knows about the kickby. Yep. Kakashi said as he turned a page of his book. She really is turning out to be quite the Kanoichi. Everyone here has high hopes for her. Although what really has my interest right now is that sister that Ghost keeps on ranting about. Do you guys suppose what he says about her is true? What? Hana asked. The stuff about the ice cream and the giant crabs, or about the supposed dragon sealed inside of her. Everyone's sweat dropped. Take a wild guess. Kakashi sighed. HNNN Anko hummed as she adopted a thinking pose. He's never really had any reason to lie to us in that kind of manner before, so I'd guess that he's telling the truth. Considering how strong he is, I wouldn't put it past him to have some ridiculously powerful monsters in his family. Or in his lunchbox for that matter. Wait, didn't he say something about things to never do in front of specific family members? Kakashi asked. Oh yeah. Han amused. Let's see, um. Never act like a fangirl in front of the smart one, never attempt to truly harm children or women near the grandfather, never try to figure out what the hell the crazy one is doing, there was another couple of things for that guy something about his blood. 
I think it was never under any circumstances drink the crazy one's blood or say demon chicken of doom near him under penalty of death or horrible maiming. Anko injected. As for his sister I'm pretty sure it was don't mention anything about her weight or age around her, also under penalty of maiming and or death. Her and I sweat dropped. That is a messed up family aren't there any rules for ghost. Anko, Hana, and Kakashi looked at each other nervously. I'm sure, but you have to make sure that no one finds out about it Hana said. Well. Her ghost sand, the rule is never Kakashi started. Ever, Hana continued. Ever Anko continued. Yes Kurunai was near frantic at this point. Put Chinese food near him. The three said in unison as Kurunai face faulted. An. I don't know how they would describe it in their world, so I'm just going to call it Chinese food here and assume that everyone knows what they're talking about. Dot. Why you're joking, right? We thought he was too until he told us the story behind it. Kakashi shuddered. Apparently, a few years ago his family ordered some takeout. One of his orders had some kind of super-powered bacteria in it, and to make a long story short, he spent the next three months living in a bathroom, constantly spewing fluids from all of his orifices. According to him, he was in such bad shape that it was impossible to attempt to put any medicine or chemicals in his body for fear of an unstable reaction. Any time he even thinks he's near the stuff, he starts to panic and his body starts to react. Hana shuddered. I tested it out once. Anko smirked. Got some dumplings and hid them in my pouch. Second I took them out, he was screaming like a child, holding his stomach and running off to the nearest bathroom, ranting about the ratio between how easy some toilet paper brands are on a person's ass and how fast they can clog a toilet. You just can't make shit like that up. An. Unless you are me. And he actually told you this? Kurunai asked skeptically. Yep. Anko answered with no tact. After he freaked out when Hana brought some leftover Kung Pao chicken from home, that one day Kakashi added with an eye smile. At first we thought it was pretty funny, but after the third time we exploited it, we kinda took it a bit too far when we saw how much it was disturbing him. That and it was getting annoying to watch him wince and whimper every time he tried to squat or sit down. Anko chuckled. Normally that doesn't happen to a man I have interest in unless I. Okay, moving on. Kurunai interrupted to save the group from the mental images that Anko was about to give them all. Anko started to giggle evilly. I just remembered, the brat's gonna hate these next few months so much. Ghost and I came up with a new training exercise for him, and I just got the okay to go through with it yesterday. Do I even want to want to know? Kurunai rubbed the bridge of her nose. Anko smiled. Well, let's just say that it simulates him protecting several precious back gaze while surrounded and chased by enemy forces. Also, whatever you hear about him for the next few months it was probably done with me behind him with a kunai at his back. The damned if you do, damned if you don't thing, huh? Kakashi asked. More like fucked over if you do and dead if you don't. Anko grinned with incredible glee. Uli noted. Kakashi commented. Um what is he doing? Kurunai asked as she watched as some of Naruto's clones practice chakra hopping. They were at a point where they looked like they were bouncing on a trampoline, doing tricks, flips, butt flops, belly flops, and other things. Oh, those are chakra hops. Hana answered. It's a new chakra control exercise that Ghost made up by accident. It's kinda hard to get the hang of at first, but after a while it grows on you. It's also a great way to build up your reserves. Pretty fun to do as well. Her and I remained silent as she observed and analyzed the practicing clones. By Hana Sensei, Anko Sensei, Kakashi Sensei. Called one clone from the side who was in front of three rather large groups of clones. What's taking you guys so long? Sorry Naruto. Kakashi replied. We were just giving Kurunai sent here some teacher's tips on what to expect from you and Hinata. Why don't you guys split into four groups instead so Kurunai can teach you as well? Her group doesn't have to be that big since she will only be going over Jinjutsu theory and how to detect and dispel it. Makes sense. It's not like I'll be able to do Jinjutsu anyway with my reserves and control. The leading clone shrugged. Well then. Kakashi said as he walked towards one group of clones. I'll be taking my group and ironing out their stances in jutsu. Poison, stealth, trap, and throwing minions, this way. Anko shouted as she started off towards the woods. Later Kurunai. I'm off to teach an asexually reproducing preteen boy how to kill people. Very funny Anko. Hana commented sarcastically. Meta clones. We're going to that smaller field by the edge of the grounds. She turned to Kurunai. Just give him a chance. He's actually a good listener if you bother to give him attention. Oh, and don't bother teaching him Jinjutsu, just how to detect and dispel it. His control isn't good enough to make any decent illusions. As for what else he can do well that's a secret for now. Hokage-sama will let you know later today if you should continue doing this or not. As for Hinata she's in good hands. And with that the Inuzuka walked away, followed by a couple hundred clones and her three hounds, which left Kurunai alone with about a hundred clones all staring at her quietly. 
Needless to say it was a very awkward moment. Um. Kurin I stalled. You get used to it eventually. Deadpanned one clone knowing exactly what was going through the woman's mind. It took Hana-sensei a couple of days to get comfortable enough to not have panic attacks and stop ranting about what she shouldn't have eaten the day before. That was pretty funny. Chuckled one clone. Remember that time when most of us transformed into copies of the triplets? Sniggered another. Ha ha. Oh yeah. She started to panic like crazy and at one point screamed into the air and passed out. Too bad later she swore that if we did it again, she would use the original to test out her new techniques. Ugh. Don't remind me. Hiro Nai's descriptions of all three of them were bad enough. Kurinai deadpanned. For some reason she felt like she was in way over her head. If you are done talking, we can begin the lesson. She said sternly. About time. All the clones said at once. This was gonna be a Luong day. As the sun set on the middle of a devastated forest about 250 kilometers away from Kanoha, Jiraiya of the Sanin lay bloody and thoroughly beaten next to an only moderately injured elder toad sage, Fukasaku. Both were focusing their dazed eyes on the unharmed long-haired man who was sitting on a large upturned boulder and staring at the sky. Neither of the injured parties could say anything at the moment as they were still processing the information that literally flooded their minds and pondering how the hell they were beaten so badly. Even though Jiraiya had been given the link that Ghost had taken from Naruto first, he was still having trouble believing all the crap that had apparently happened. Now that both of you are back with the living Ghost side. We can discuss about what is going to happen in the next few years, Akatsuki, Arachimaru, and your second punishment for failing to be a competent human being and rider. It had been two months since Ghost had left. Saratobi was a bit irritated at Anko and Hana for bringing Kurinai into the training regime without letting him know. After explaining what needed to be known to the Jinjutsu mistress, everyone agreed to allow the woman to come and teach the two twice a week. Hana and her triplets had finally managed to finish step one of their elemental training, thanks to Kakashi's and Naruto's guidance. It also helped that at one point, Naruto decided to teach her the shadow clone technique. As for how her dogs managed to learn so quickly, everyone just assumed that since animals are more in touch with nature, they could learn such things faster than normal. Anko had a hell of a time training Naruto. Apparently Ghost's new training exercise was to sneak the blonde into a random bathhouse and cover him from head to toe in the women's section's underwear, then literally throw him in the middle of the spa where the owners could see him. The rest of the training was simple. Don't get hit and don't get caught for as long as you freaking can. Oh and try to survive as well. As a precaution, Anko was there to prevent the damage from getting too extreme, however even she wasn't a sure enough safeguard when he leveled up and was tasked to play keep away with the panties of the women who frequented the secret gym in Kanoichi Springs. Needless to say that Naruto's reputation increased dramatically with the male population and decreased just as quickly with the female. How Hinata kept her cool around Anko, nobody knew. As for how Anko managed to get Naruto to do these things all Naruto would say is that all those beatings that he got from the women were nothing compared to what Hinata would do if Anko told her that whatever that meant. Speaking of Hinata, the girl was still making remarkable progress. She had finally managed to complete Rasengan and was in the process of designing even more techniques based on the shell-based third step. Her modifications to Jiken were still in development, but there was visible, significant improvement to those who paid enough attention to her kata. Her gravity seal was also at 3x, as Ghost had told her that she could raise it that high after another month's worth of training. As for her training under Hana, Anko, and Kurinai well, it was going very well. Hana had almost run out of things to teach Hinata about humans and was contemplating teaching her about the more detailed aspects about organs, what they do specifically, and how to manipulate them. Anko was frowning over the little girl's ability to track almost anything and her rapidly progressing skills at stealth in particular. While she was still stressed by how dull the academy was and the clan elders constantly attempting to get her to slip and show one of her new techniques, it was now countered by Naruto's daily interrogation practice. She wasn't trying to molest Naruto yet, but she apparently had a hard time literally letting go of him after it was all done. All in all, the only things that are holding back Hinata from being automatically promoted to Chiknin would be her still relatively small reserves, compared to how developed everything else is, her small size, her endurance, and her lack of experience. As for Naruto, although he was not nearly as experienced as Hinata in Tajutsu, medicine, chakra control, and long-term planning, he was doing equally well in his training. The highlights of such were his special training with Anko, his progress with his seventh sense, he was now able to create strong breezes and had found an interesting trait about his conditioned air, he could now use his bracers, or as everyone called them fox talons, without worrying about cutting off any appendages, and in particular, his interest into sealing. Saratobi had brought Naruto to the Namaka's estate several weeks after the Mizuki incident. Said estate resembled those of the other major clans in Kanoha, except it had the second largest grounds in the village, next to the Naras for obvious reasons. 
the estate was on the far edge of town, a good distance away from pretty much everywhere else in the village. Naruto was slightly irritated that when he finally moved here it would take him forever to get to the Chirakus. Naruto spent the entire day there, looking at pictures in various rooms. One room, filled to the brim with baby accessories and a crib, had his presence for a good hour before he moved on. The place that had most of his attention though was the library, which was crammed full of scrolls of every subject. Jutsu, theory, history, ceiling, styles, blacksmithing, the place had it all. Even Saratobi was momentarily caught off guard by the variety and quantity of the library's collection. When it was finally time to go, Saratobi allowed Naruto to take one scroll from the estate to study aside from Horatian of course, not that they had found it yet. To the Hokage's amusement and surprise, the blonde picked a beginner's guide to ceiling. When asked why ceiling, Naruto shrugged and merely said that he barely knew enough to make a decent storage seal and that it would come in handy later. That being said, Naruto was still reading the scroll, which happened to have a bunch of his father's notes scratched into the side to make things easier. He could now make a basic exploding note and was already making storage scrolls to carry everything he needed for missions. Unfortunately, everything else regarding sealing was still way beyond his reach, even with shadow clones. It was just too boring. Life at the academy was somewhat the same as well. While Naruto still pretended to be an idiot, saying stupid things and pulling pranks every two or three days, the entire class was treating him with some suspicion, meaning they treat him exactly the same as before, but are a bit lighter on the insults and name-calling. Sasuke occasionally tried to get Naruto to fight him, but Naruto still kept going on about his condition and that he would be able to fight soon enough. So just wait a few more weeks, duck butt. While Sasuke would have normally killed anyone who called his hair that, three things were in his way. One. He would get into major trouble if he was caught and he didn't want to get on the bad side of the Hokage. The old man had made a point to the Ichiha during one of his temper tantrums when he was younger, after the massacre, that he was once Itachi's boss for a damn good reason. The boy doubted that the old man was stronger than his brother now, but that didn't mean that Saratobi couldn't hand him his own ass with humiliating ease. 2. Naruto occasionally helped him out when he was getting chazzed by his fangirls and he grudgingly admitted that he owed the dope. 3. And most important of all, Naruto had threatened Sasuke that if he went too far, Naruto would somehow make all his fangirls evolve into yaoi fangirls. Even though Sasuke hated Itachi with a passion, he still remembered his brother warning him that yaoi fangirls were the scariest things that he would ever encounter and that absolutely nothing could stop them once they got started. Considering that said brother killed an entire clan in a single night, Sasuke chose to take the safe route and only asked to fight Naruto twice a week. All in all, things were looking good. Izumo and Kitetsu were once again stuck on guard duty. For some reason, the two were always stuck with a job, even though it was supposedly assigned randomly. The two had been pinned to the door so many times that people were starting to call them the gatekeepers. They were also called the sleeping dogs and those two unlucky bastards. As Izumo took his nap, Kitetsu lazily gazed down the road from the village. For some reason, he had been getting this odd feeling for a while. The kind of feeling that makes the hair on the back of one's neck stand on end for no discernible reason. It had started a few hours beforehand and had slowly gotten more distinct ever since. Rubbing his eyes for a moment, Kitetsu noticed that someone was coming towards the village. It appeared to be a man in a zipped-up black trench coat with a green flame design on the bottom, hovering barely an inch above his grey steel toed boots. His short and spiky brown hair had lightning green highlights, which paled in comparison to his piercing sharp green eyes, which had a bored look to them. Slung over one shoulder was a small traveler's bag. All in all, the guy couldn't have been more than 5'8 Kitetsu didn't know why, but he had a feeling that this guy was not normal. Boy, wake up. He nudged Izumo as he analyzed the man. NNNNHHHH. What is it? The sleeping man yawned. Just stay awake for a moment. He whispered. You there. He called out as the stranger approached the gates. What is your business in Kanoha? The man lazily turned his attention to the two guards, who momentarily froze under his analytical gaze. My most sincere apologies. He replied in a monotone voice. I was unaware of what the process was for entering and exiting this village. Izumo chuckled, hiding his uncertainty about the man. Can't blame you. Most people who are coming here for their first time don't. Still gotta know what you're planning to do here and what your name is, though. The man yawned as he nodded. But of course. He walked over to the two men at a normal pace. I have two purposes for being here. The first is to conduct some business that my brother started several months ago. The second is rather confidential and requires me to be in the presence of your Hokage. If possible, can you please send word of my arrival? I would prefer to get this matter over with as soon as possible. The two guards looked at each other for a few moments before they nodded and Kitetsu went back for a messenger bird. Who may I ask is requesting an audience with the Hokage. Izumo asked as he started writing down on the necessary document to request a meeting with the village leader. 
The man's lips twitched a bit, almost as if he was smiling. My name is Scabbard, and I am one of Ghost's brothers. Thanks for watching guys, I hope did you enjoyed this if you do please leave me a like share and subscribe for more, so take care and bye.